The other point that I think needs needs to be hammered home <clears throat> is what is the size of the problem that we're advocating for? Is the end goal to reduce in melanoma incidence? And if you didn't look any deeper, you'd say, yeah, of course, we want less melanoma diagnosed. That should be the goal. But that isn't actually the goal. The goal is less all-cause mortality. That is the goal. We want people living longer. We want people dying less. So what the melanoma in Southern Sweden cohort found was that the women with the most sun exposure did have slightly more melanoma diagnoses, malignant melanoma diagnoses. Now, was this because they were using tanning beds? Quite possibly, because that study did not control for tanning bed use. Was it because that more mal malignant melanoma had been diagnosed, and that is something that Wella talked about in our podcast, that he believes that the explosion of melanoma diagnosis, even though an overdiagnosis by the dermatology profession. So regardless of the fact that those are all possible um, explanations, and obviously tanning bed is isolated UV, it's, there's no infrared that would be, that is protective. But and what they found was even though there were more malignant melanomas diagnosed in the women that had more sun, the, the difference in mortality was still, it was that twofold difference between the most sun and the least sun exposed. They also found that of the women who did get diagnosed with malignant melanoma, 10% of, um, of the women with the highest sun exposure were dead after 25 years, whereas 35% of the lowest sun exposure women were dead after the study period. A massive, and I think that, that turned out to be an eightfold relatively ri relative risk of mortality between um, sun exposure groups. So this is something that the the melanoma researchers that you mentioned need to understand or uh, uh, grapple with is that what, th what that st data showed from Sweden is that if you do have a melanoma diagnosis, you want to be getting more sun because those with more sun had the better outcomes. And again, that's backed up by the, the vitamin D deficiency picture and, and the fact that you're getting higher tumor, um, mitotic rate, deeper invasion um, in vitamin D deficient women. So um, the point, I think, is that the melanoma institutes are interested in reducing these incidents and they're trying to reduce the incidents by any means possible, even if at the expense of all-cause mortality. That's why I've put together this, this, I'm putting together this solar callus course because, and um, yeah, I, I mean, I can explain the process of building the solar callus quite, quite quickly, but um, if we're going to educate people or uh, convey the importance of the solar callus and how to do this, and the, as well as the nuance that, are, that we, we've just been talking about, it actually needs to be laid out in quite in a d certain degree of depth. So, and the first two modules are preparation and explanation and theory, and how um, I'm going to ma I'm making the point that yes, you might slightly increase your risk of skin cancers if you do deliberate sun exposure, but the the and and photo aging. Let let's not um let's not um. Pretend, yes, you can very, very much mitigate it if you're getting a heap of red light. And there's dietary stuff as well, especially to do with uh, the, the omega-3s and potentially collagen too that can help mitigate photoaging. But it's it probably some degree of photoaging is, is likely going to happen. But what you're going to get in response to that deliberate sun exposure is so enormously beneficial for your cardiovascular health, for your um, can all these other forms of cancer prevention. Um, mental health, autoimmune disease prevention, infectious disease prevention is so enormous that, um, as you said, Mike, it's a balance. It's a balance. Everything in medicine is a risk versus benefit equation. And this seems to be one of the most important and favorable risk versus benefit um, equations. And um, again, depending on your skin type and exactly what latitude you're at, um, that is being ignored and that's kind of being been, been thrown out the, the back door. But I think, Vicky, that the episode that I did with Richard Weller, things like that is, is actually going to have to be a starting point for um, those, those melanoma researchers. And maybe they'll, they'll listen to it. Um, maybe someone will send it to them. I brought up the ABS, the Australian Bureau of Statistics, um, 
causes of death in 2022. And one way of looking at cause of death or the impact of death um, causes of death is years of life lost. So on the, it's basically a calculation that's based on um, the, the age of death of people and what is the, it's, it's a very, very objective, absolute way of looking at um, the impact of different diseases. So at the top of it is suicide because a lot of people committing suicide are younger, um, massive amount of uh, years of um, life lost. But if you go down, and uh, maybe I'll, I'm going to do a screen share again to really hammer this um, point home uh, for for everyone. But if you go down the list, then what you find is that melanoma is twelfth on, or even even lower, twelfth on the list of of, of causes of death years of potential life loss for all leading causes intentional self-harm so that's that's a massive massive uh, cause of potential life years ischemic heart disease so this is atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease so ischemic heart disease is is second and that is a, were responsible for, for close to just under 80,000 um 76,000 um years of potential life loss so next is uh Lung cancer, lung and tra- tracheal cancer, then land transport accidents, accidental poisoning, liver cirrhosis, um, so colorectal cancer, uh, chronic lower respiratory disease, so that includes things like pneumonia, breast cancer, cerebrovascular disease, so stroke, um, malignant uh, neoplasm of lymphoid, and so leukemias and lymphoma, COVID-19, diabetes, malignant neoplasm of the brain, brain cancer, pancreatic cancer, uh, liver cancer, and then congenital malformations. So that's responsible for 11,000 life years lost. So here we go. We are down at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 18, but you take out accidental poisoning, land transport. So it's it's 15th on the list of potential medical causes, and that is melanoma and mal- malignant neoplasms of the skin. So if we look at this list, what are the what are these causes that could potentially be prevented by more sun exposure? Ischemic heart disease, massively so, and that again is what w- Weller showed through POMC, through nitric oxide, through um, reducing blood clotting, through reducing blood pressure. And you know innumerable benefits on cardiovascular health, and that is incidentally what I'm going to actually going to be talking about in Melbourne. If anyone is going to come to the Regenerate event, I'm I'm going to be talking specifically about sunlight and cardiovascular health. But lung cancer, and and okay, yes, more sun and circadian regulation is going to massively help lung cancer. It's going to help uh, br- uh, bowel cancer, breast cancer. It's going to pneumonia and infectious diseases. So, like this is such an important graph. And it is really, I think, putting into perspective the fact that we, we it's the elephant and the mouse. And everyone's looking at the mouse, but the elephant in the room is all these other diseases. 